fintech, the term that everybody uses and possibly not much of understanding behind it. Uh, fintech uh, can be described as this, uh, you know, uh, as a next platform for growth. This is the intersection between technology and financial services. If you think about it, uh, 10 years ago, nobody would have imagined financial services uh, being distributed over mobile phones. That's a reality today. Uh, and that has happened because of the evolution of technology. So FinTech in short describes how technology is being used to distribute and create financial services. Uh, I think that's what FinTech is about. Uh, there is nothing, unfortunately, in a fast evolving market like fintech, there's nothing like a typical company. Uh, but I think what people refer to uh, is usually they focus on startups, which are breaking into areas that banks and other legacy financial institutions have dominated. So in essence, the ecosystem has got two players. One is an incumbent and then the other is an insurgent. Uh, an incumbent is, uh, think about it, like a big institution who've got an existing dominating market presence with existing client base, etc. And the insurgents are those who have new ways of solving uh, the market issue that uh, you know, the big legacy incumbents have dominated. Uh, so they're trying to eat off uh, market share or revenue uh, profit pools from these incumbents. So essentially fintechs are these insurgents. Uh, let me throw uh, some numbers. Um, in 2016, uh, financial technology companies around the world raised a total of uh, 36 uh, billion dollars. This is expected to go to 45 billion dollars by 2020. Uh, closer home uh, in India, uh, you know, we estimate the industry to be about 2 billion, uh, that is by 2020. Uh, currently, India is the third largest uh, fintech ecosystem uh, in the world. Uh, there are about 1500 funding deals that were executed and we possibly may have about uh, you know 1700 unique investors so that's the size of the industry um, i think one of the things that blogs uh, the uh, fintech space is uh, a bit of a hype at the moment i think the valuations are over the top uh, so, uh, if you were to ask me to uh, look at the crystal ball, I would think that uh, in the next 12-24 months, I would think that a sense of, uh, shall I say, a balance will be restored. I think what will be more important is not just, uh, you know, um, uh, share of, you know, customers, but also profitability. I think the emphasis will also start coming in. Uh, one of the other things is already we see that happening and I think it will only uh, increase in the next 12 months is this collaboration between the incumbents and the insurgents. Uh, what do these insurgents look for from the incumbents? I think they are looking for capital, they are looking for advice, they are looking for insight and I think that is just a natural uh, you know, partnership and I think that is bound to, uh, bound to continue. Uh, the other thing I would uh, uh, think will happen is we've seen a lot of interest happen in the business to consumer space. You think about lending, you think about payments, you think about, uh, you know, uh, cross-border remittances. This is where I, we've seen a lot of technology companies or startup companies uh, take position in. That I think will gr gradually move into a lot more difficult business to business interactions and activities. I think one would tend to think that over time uh, it, would, it would move in. Uh, the other thing is uh, we've seen a lot of technology in its infancy. You think about blockchain, uh, there are lots of experiments, good ones out there, but these have not really been commercialized. So one would expect to see some bit of uh, real proof points uh, emerge. So this is what I would be looking for in the next 12 months as key milestones. Advice. Um, maybe one or two things uh, from what I have seen. Uh, the first and the foremost that comes to my mind is one of perfecting the pitch. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, ideas are a dime a dozen. Yeah, so uh, I think it is about trying to see how this particular idea uh, is actually impacting the end consumer. And I speak of this uh, in, from the notion that 
you know many of us are not digital natives uh, we are digital migrants uh, you know uh, how the entrepreneur sees a particular technology or an idea isn't necessarily how an end consumer a digital migrant is going to consume that service so it's important to understand uh, what you're offering and therefore how it is going to be uh, perceived and consumed by the end consumer i think that's possibly one general advice sometimes it is not very clear the second piece of advice i would offer is one around a specific skill set that i think every entrepreneur has to develop which is one around uh, emotional resilience uh, in my mind there is nothing more impactful than being repeatedly told that your idea uh, is stupid uh, but you have this personal conviction that uh, this idea works so the, to be able to pick up from you know some of those conversations that have necessarily not gone your way and able to be flexible in your mindset in your thinking and adapt it so that you ultimately achieve where you want to go to i think is going to be very important i think that on the soft side uh, uh, possibly are uh, things that possibly i think i don't see enough amongst entrepreneurs I think one of the things that is being spoken about uh, India is this huge demographic dividend. Um, and one of the key ways to unlock the demographic dividend is employment. Uh, so no wonder we have uh, campaigns like Make in India, Startup India, the focus being on creating employment. Uh, but there is another side to it, which is the fact that while 15 million people enter the workforce every year, 75% of them are not job ready or industry ready. I think this is exactly uh, the problem that uh, a firm like us faces, no different from anybody else uh, in the country. And this is perhaps where uh, people like Amarticus, uh, organizations like Amarticus, can help, which is offering uh, an ability for people uh, to be upskilled before they actually get onto the job. Um, so this could be in the way of offering indus industry specific immersions. Uh, so the specific program that Barclays is working with uh, Imarticus is uh, our own contribution in that uh, space in a field that matters to us the most. Uh, this is a, a, a campaign by which we are hoping to attract entrepreneurs who are looking to get some exposure into the financial services industry freshers who are seeking to enter our industry or even consummate professionals who want to understand what the future of the financial services entail. So this uh, immersion program or pro degree as it is called uh, is uh, hopefully helping people in trying to understand how this industry will shape and with that maybe they were able to be much more work ready and much more calibrated when they hit uh, you know their specific role in a specific company.